it's a weird situation where like I'm on an off board. Alchemist doesn't typically want to be on this board. You really need troll, but I'm basically I'm playing for like third place instead of first. Playing for first can land you a lot worse. You can get like eighth if you try to be greedy and play for too much long term. And I don't think I can buy or lock this team for either, because I'm just trying to complete Conquer or Necker at this point. I mean, right now, I'm just playing the best 9 unit board I can, and trying not to worry about the future. And you'll see that reflected in my, like, economy game right now. So let's math this out. So every time you have an alliance completed, your ace odds basically um, go up 15 flat percent. Well, not your ace odds. Your odds of finding that unit, if you have an ace, go up a flat 18%, right? Um, and this is this is why it's like so it's so important uh, for it. So we can chill here a bit. I mean, we're on at this point. We're only on two outs. Tide enters like a really big out because we have a refresher, but that's fine. Um, how it works is pretty straightforward. Um, and you'll see. I'll, I'll explain why it's like it's so important to bench these in this build, and that's why it's so dumb that I'm not doing it. How it works is really straightforward. So you get the flat 15% rate if you have at least one uh, tier of the alliance and nothing else. And that's not on top of ace odds you have. It's on top of, when you find an ace, it's just a flat chance of it being that hero. And specifically, this is kind of important to note, it doesn't read how many units are in the pool for this, right? Which is why I've said before that when someone takes a troll out of the pool, it only reduces your find rate of troll by like a couple percent. It's not even very much. It's actually a really low percent. I'll math that out in a second here. Um, but basically, here, let's check this out. So we've got Scaled, 15%, we've got Troll, 15%, and we've got Warlock, 15%. This is without Shaman, and sometimes you will have Shaman, so keep that in mind. Um, sorry, I don't want to get distracted. Okay, so that means right off the bat, 45% of your odds are going to go into these. Then, the other 55% remaining, because 55 and 45 complement to 100, the other 55% remaining gets distributed among the seven uh, ace units, including the ones above here before. So we can divide 50 by, 55 by 7, that's pretty easy, and we go ahead and get 7.8%. So basically, everything is at a 7.8% chance. So, Medusa odds go up. So, Medusa, Troll, uh, Troll Warlord, and Disruptor odds all are out equal 15% plus the 7.8, which is, of course, 22.8% per unit. And the others, the incomplete ones, these are Gyro, Techies, um, I, I forget which, which units these are. What am I forgetting? Enigma. There's one more unit here. What's the seventh unit? It's some it's some garbage unit. Right? It's something that I, I never really remember. Lich? Oh yeah, Lich. Lich is actually a decent one in mages, but I just don't play mages. And these ones are all at 7.8% chance. So like you'll see, this is the most standard situation. This is the most standard build. So I'm at 7.8 compared to 22.8. So, what's important to note about this is, this is basically a third. You are three times as likely to find one of these heroes as one of these. That's a big deal, right? It's bigger than it probably immediately seems, because you're completing so many of them. So let's talk about, then, the idea of having the, um, if you have the Shadow Shaman added to that too, that means you're at 60% to start and the rest is divided by 40%, right? So let's let's do let's do the math on that. Let, let's see how that works out. So Medusa, Troll, Disruptor, Enigma will obviously be a total of fifteen percent plus the variable, and the variable is just forty divided by seven, as always, right? So forty divided by seven should be like five point nine or something. Oh, five point seven. Five point seven one. So everything else goes to five point seven one. Um, and plus five point seven. Equals. Aren't I in a game? What's happening? Wait, I'm in a game and I don't really want to lose this game. Hang on. Wait a second. I've been win streaking on this. Wait, wait, wait. I need to I need to like roll it down here. Give me a give me a hot second though. Uh, let's let's go back to this explanation here, because I'm sure you guys just don't care about what's happening in this game. I mean to be perfectly honest, it's playing the same as every game ever. Um okay. 
So these odds are at 20.7. So you can see right here, um, this is the difference between having Shadow Shaman and having Batrider. Your ace tier odds are basically 2% lower for finding Troll Warlord, um, which matters. That's a big deal. And everything else is just at, you know, the 5.7% uh, rate. Um, now the one thing, the one thing that's really, really interesting to note, and I did mention a bit earlier, the one thing that's really interesting to note is that I can take this roll here, actually. We're on some pretty solid outs. We do have, like, these trolls paired. We do want a Witch Doctor on this board as well soon. Okay, um... So we want that Witch Doctor that we just missed. This Assassin guy still here. He might kill my troll, that's fine. Okay, so the one interesting thing to note is basically <clears throat> that when you... When these odds apply, this flat 15% does not draw from the pool, okay? There's 10 aces of each unit left in the pool, and this, this flat 15%, when you see it off this 15%, rather than like this 7.8 or this 5.7, when it's off of this 15%, it will not take it out of the pool, right? So something that's really important to understand is there's this myth a lot of people are saying that like, if you wait to find your troll, people are gonna take it out of the pool and the odds go down. Let's actually calculate how much they go down by. Cause they go down by almost nothing. It's like a couple of percent, probably at like at most, at most. It, it, it's like almost, it, 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 it's almost impossible to, to even quantify. Like I, I can calculate it on average and I'll get like, I, I, I'm guessing I'll get like 2% or something super low. Um, let me not lose though, you know. You, you, you know the deal, we're, we're playing a video game. Let's play this video game. Can I put a troll level one over an elk too? Okay, so let's let's go back to math. When someone takes a troll out of the pool, they're basically on this build. They might so let let's say they're here. So when someone took a troll out of the pool, the odds of them not even reducing the amount of trolls left in the pool are basically two to one. It's a sixty-six percent chance because of course um, there's the fifteen percent compared to the seven point eight. So it's a, it's a basically a 67-ish percent chance that they didn't even remove a troll from the pool, right? And then on top of that, on top of that, you then calculate, like, oh, you guys didn't see this, but troll just took an easy pairing. I don't know if we can complete this, though. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I should pay more attention to, like, positioning and stuff here, huh? I don't know. I, I find math more interesting than gameplay, to be honest. Maybe I'm weird. It's, it's not even a jab at gameplay. I just kind of like the theory behind probability games. I guess that makes me kind of a nerd. I don't know. I never really liked math in school. I think my teachers just taught it to me wrong. Not not to, like, you know, defer blame, but it's like, I don't know. I just never found interesting applications for it that I cared about. And so I just had literally zero motivation to learn math. But this only applies to ace units, correct? Yes, these special odds are for sp special for ace. The ace pool is 10 for each unit, but has ace odds has separate odds? Yes, exactly. So like, you can look at this situation. I can prove right now that like this, this myth of don't go for, don't go for troll unless, uh, or, or sorry, roll down early to get trolls before other people do. I can, I can prove right now that this myth is complete nonsense. Um, but I kind of want to balance that with also just like not losing the game right now. Um, so let's let's talk more about this. So yeah, when someone has a troll early, it's a 67% chance that they didn't even remove a troll from the pool, right? And on top of that, when you find a troll, I've got to, I guess, scroll this down a bit. When you find a troll, there's also a 67% chance that the pool size didn't matter, right? So when someone removes a troll from the pool, it rolls both of these 67% chance, both of these two, two out of threes, right? It rolls both of these 67% chance, and only if both of them, if, if neither of them hit, the one third by the one third, which is, what, an 11%, if neither of them hit, then it gets reduced by the effective odds of one, and that's the 11%. Wait a second, hang on, I'm playing a video game, calm down. <laughs> Dude, I, I should be paying more attention. I honestly, I should be. It would be a good idea, too. All right. So, there's an 11% chance that every troll taken out of the pool will actually affect your odds. And when it does, it lowers your odds by 
how much on the troll, right? I mean, there's 10 trolls in the pool, so you're lowering your odds by effectively 10% on the first troll and more on the others, right? <clears throat> okay. So, 10% by 11%, um, you know, you're, you're getting basically 10 of 11%, and effectively you end up with something like 1%. So it's like, like there's a couple of roundings here, so you could disagree like with my exact decimal place, but at the end of the day, every troll that someone else has decreases your ability to find troll by about 1%. It's really, really low. It's even lower than I was saying it was yesterday. So that's, that's how like the ace tier odds work right now. Um, not too much more to say about that. Basically, it means it's very, 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 very important. Just because you are completing some of these, it's very, very, very important to be pairing the trolls on your bench. And I, I misplay too much by, like, sometimes, like, I'll forget to buy a Shadow Shaman or a Batrider for a few rounds. And that is such a big deal. Because, again, your troll odds will triple. They go up about three times as soon as you find that Batrider or Shadow Shaman. And Batrider has about 2% on Shadow Shaman. Um, when you have an Arc Warden that you own, which is nice, that 2% can matter, um, if it's free. I mean, obviously, I'm, I was just now saying that 1% when every opponent takes one doesn't matter. And I'm talking about the argument of, like, rolling down early, the argument of, like, drastically changing your gameplay to get that 1%. If this 2% is just the difference between Bat and Shadow Shaman, that feels a bit better. It's like, that actually matters for basically no cost, right? <clears throat> and that's effectively it. So that's, that's how aces work. That's the breakdown of them uh, right now. And that's a large part of the reason why I don't subscribe to the super early aggressive roll down on nine builds. We do it in some games. We did it in... We did it in... Was it this game or last game? Honestly, these games are blurring together because we're playing the same thing every time. But we're doing... Uh, the, like, super aggressive, like, on 21, roll down to 10 gold. I'll do that if I'm on outs. I think if you're not on outs, it's just dumb to do that, honestly. But it, ju it just comes down to the function of your roll value. It's like, if your roll value is high and if your board is weak, then, yeah, I mean, slam your rolls until you hit, like, two things. And if you never hit two things, then, yeah, you roll to zero. That's how that works, sure. But, I mean, I think that's going to represent fewer games than I see people at top level. Even at top levels doing that kind of... Um, play. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be doing that in general. Okay. So that game, I guess we can, I'm sure we can get third if we pay more attention to it. Second or third. I basically like AFK'd for eight rounds there or so. That kind of cost me a bit. I don't know. This is kind of the point, the point at the meta where I just like, I don't know. It's not like tilting. I guess you could say it's a type of tilting because it kind of is. Where it's just like, I don't know, I got like, I got third place, I placed kind of bad today, I got a third and a fourth, which is pretty low, and I'm just like not climbing, and I, I can't bring myself to care about my rating or climbing right now. Honestly, what, what might be better is just like studying more of the probability, doing the, more of this kind of thing, like math, where it'll actually transfer into not only future updates of this game, like these kinds of understandings for both me and you guys. You know, that's going to be helpful. When the big patch happens, you'll be prepared if you're, like, a high-level player or you want to be one. Um, you want to play in, like, some tournaments like these. It's good stuff to understand. But also, I mean, just for other games. Like, even even if we're not even thinking about uh, Underlords, I think probability theory is really, really integral to understand.